Hi and welcome. We're going to have a good look at Starry Dome, a really effective piece that most certainly paints a picture, obvious from the title, um, and it's by George Nevada and it's currently a Grade 5 piece on the ABR Standard Syllabus. This video is made at the request of Hilary. Hilary, good luck with learning this piece. I hope you find this little tutorial helpful and any questions do come back to me. I'll go through it all slowly towards the end of the video, but first of all, let me just jump around and look at some of the things that we need to think about. We need to know to count. <laughs> Sorry for stating the blinking obvious. There are bars of two, four, three, four, 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 and five, four in this, and we've got to be able to feel that rock steady pulse. First of all, let's have a look at that five, four bar um, on the second line. I think the very first thing I would want to do would be this. Where, what fits in where? What's on the beat? What's after it? Left hand looks like this. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Mm, right hand is this. One, two, three, four, so the A is on the fourth beat. One, two, three, four, five. Both together. One, two, three, four, five. One more. One, two, three, four, five. Then I might even just get a note. Let's pick a C and an F, completely random pretty much. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's starting to take shape. And then I'll start to add in the notes. So let's look at the left hand first of all. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four. And often very useful when you're working at A bar just to take it into the following bar. Right hand will be one, two, three, four, five. Both together. No pedal for now. One, two, three, four, five. So really work out that rhythm. And in bar 13, you can see it's the same thing. Another thing to think about is these uh, beautiful, crunchy chords we've got going on from bar 17. And from bar 25, it's the same thing, but in a more arpeggio style. So we have to know these chords. And that particular shape, he just moves up through the scale of E flat major, through that tonality. I wonder if I can move that shape way through the scale. Great exercise to do. Just that bar. Can I find the same, the same clusters? Have I got a handle on, on what they are? And get the ear familiar with the sound if it feels alien to you. Just take your time and enjoy the sound he's creating. I'm playing in, I'm being very free with the time at the moment. I'm not counting strictly. We'll come to the pedal in a moment. Very, very pretty sound. And from bar 26, it's exactly the same chords with, with a rhythm. Uh, arpeggiated. Let me just play that through now and um, I'm going to avoid the pedal. Really just get my fingers, are my fingers on the right notes? One, two, three, Um, 
I was counting, <laughs> silently mouthing the counting. Well, by all means, count aloud too. Counting aloud is so brilliant. Really good way of practicing. Perhaps get the metronome out. Once you're familiar and are comfortable with what the sound is and where the chords are on the keyboard. Um, pedaling is another big issue. The whole of that first line is all the same pedal. Um, keep it down and it's going to be legato pedaling throughout. And that particular section I've just played, we're going to want to pedal for each chord. But we're linking them up. You saw when I did it without the pedal, the, the chords don't link up. We want them to be absolutely linked up together. So as my fingers go down to press the keys, my pedal comes up because it gets rid of what was sounding before and then grabs that new chord. Let me just think through that. Pedal is down. Pedal is up, down. Up, down. So there's no blurring of the chords there. We get one chord at a time, held with the pedal. They were smooth. And elsewhere, he's pedaled the entire thing, um, apart from this section we're talking about now. And for the next bit, where it's arpeggiated, I do exactly the same thing. Pedal. 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 So I hope that makes sense. Now let me go through it all, hands together, and I'll sort of discuss what I'm thinking as I'm going through. Nice and steady, it's a steady piece anyway, but I'm thinking something like, Two pedal is down, three, four. That seems slightly counterintuitive to keep the pedal on for so long. Especially here, my instinct would be to change it, but no. I would go to fifth finger on the A because. that cluster four and three is what naturally happens there but it's a bit awkward with those you might prefer to do two and three let's go from where the right hand comes in Four, but the rhythm is the same, even if the notes are slightly different. One, two, three, four, five, one. Hold on to the E flat. Still hold on to the E flat while I'm playing the A. Hold on to the F. It's as if this happens so often in piano music. Imagine we're playing in a string quartet. First violin. Playing that top line, and meanwhile, the second violin is playing another. And we have to treat them as two lines of music with one hand. So hold on to the things um, facilely that we're meant to. One, two, three, four, five, one. I can still hear that lovely, lovely crunch. Um, and I do love the major seventh chords there, and that bar. Um, and then we're into our, our lovely uh, crunches that we've already looked at a little bit with a pedal. And this change of time signatures that he's enjoying gives it that slightly unsettled feeling. As a listener, you don't quite know where the first beat of the bar is. It's lovely. It's a sort of spacey feeling, I think. It's a floaty to... One, two. Again, the temptation, my instinct would be to start a new pedal for that B flat, but no, he says he wants it. So there's more washing. 
rushes of sound that one might uh, might think. And all this section, as I said before, do practice it counting aloud, just feeling the pulse, what fits in with what, where am I? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So the third beat of the bar is just held stuff, isn't it? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, two. Again, holding on to the F there and adding the G. Um, and the rest of it, I'd like to think, is it is, isn't it? It's the same material as we've already seen. It's a really effective piece. I like it with the repeats, I have to say. I think that extra length that that gives, gives the piece a chance to tell its story beautifully. Um, but if we're in an exam situation, we need not to do the repeats. So when you're doing concerts for families or recordings for your own YouTube channel, I would put them in, definitely. Um, it's a really effective piece. I heard um, uh, you know, other people do uh, recordings of these pieces and somebody did, did, who will remain nameless did, did them and they said they didn't like this piece because it was too much E flat, you know, too much of that going on. Um, I don't want to be critical, but it, to me it's just sort of not understanding what's going on. It's creating this sort of meditative feeling, I think. And I think it's very effective, very beautiful. And I do love those chords. walk around the scale playing those kind of clusters can you play them in a different key um there's a lot in it, in it well worth a study i think and if you have any questions on it please do get in touch hillary or anybody else or pop them in the comments down below and uh, good luck with this piece take care bye bye for now